So Richard Wolff absolutely decimated Milton Friedman's greed is good argument on the Michael Brooks show. Really? Decimated? He could only refute a tenth of it? That doesn't sound so bad. Tell me, is there some society you know that doesn't run on greed? You think Russia doesn't run on greed? You think China doesn't run on greed? What is greed? Of course, none of us are greedy. It's only the other fellow who's greedy. <laughs> this, the world runs on individuals pursuing their separate interests. The great achievements of civilization have not come from government bureaus. Einstein didn't construct his theory under order from a, from a, a bureaucrat. Henry Ford didn't revolutionize the automobile industry that way. In the only cases in which the masses have escaped from the kind of grinding poverty you're talking about, the only cases in recorded history are where they, where they have had capitalism and largely free trade. If you want to know where the masses are worth, worse off, worst off, it's exactly in the kinds of societies that depart from that. So that the record of history is absolutely crystal clear that there is no alternative way so far discovered of improving the lot of the ordinary people that can hold a candle to the productive activities that are unleashed by a free enterprise system. Well, every time I listen to Mr. Uh, Friedman, I close my eyes and I say to myself, there's living proof, or it was living proof. <laughs> oh, yeah, laugh at someone's death. Stay classy there. That the Nobel Prize is not given to anybody except if they towed a line. You're actually saying that Milton Friedman towed the line? Seriously? By the way, before we go any further, this video was requested by Wes Savage. If you'd like to formally request a video, just go to Patreon or Subscribestar and subscribe at the $2 level. He got a Nobel Prize for telling us that greed is the engine of human behavior. No, he got the Nobel Prize for his achievements in the field of consumption analysis, monetary history and theory, and for his demonstration of the complexity of stabilization policy. Jeez Louise, Wolf, you can just look this stuff up! I must wonder, listening to this kind of drivel, <laughs> what, what, what the world, did he never understand psychology? For a hundred years, psychologists have explained to us with empirical studies and theoretical work, that human beings are bundles of contradictions, that what is my self-interest is something I only dimly perceive, and moreover, many of the things I'm interested in contradict one another. And exactly what about this do you think contradicts Friedman? He said that's how people behave. He never said they make the right decision, certainly not 100% of the time. And in fact, another Nobel winner and figure associated with libertarianism, F.A. Hayek, based his entire Nobel lecture on the fact that no one can know these things. We are not some kind of calculus machine. Well, good thing he never said we are. Are you going to respond to what he actually said or are pathetic straw men all you have? Human huh. beings don't know, and they're changing all the time, so even if they know, their knowledge is out of date within moments of having conceived the idea. Exactly! And that being the case, it's even more laughable that a government would know what to do. Government that is made out of these same contradictory, irrational people that have no way of knowing what 330 million of their countrymen have trouble figuring out for themselves! So if this is some kind of takedown of the free market, and you haven't said how it is, how is it not an even bigger takedown of your wonderful central planning? These are not complex ideas, but they're way beyond anything Mr. Uh, Friedman can manage. Again, how you think this somehow relates to what Friedman is talking about is almost as big a mystery as to how you fail to realize that this completely negates any validity of central planning. He has a job to do, and that job is to sell private enterprise. Well, at least he had a real job. That's more than anyone can say for you. If his job is to sell private enterprise, whatever that means, what's yours if not selling everyone on your wonderful government solutions? 
capitalist private enterprise is the best thing, the only thing, the right thing. Just beat it over and over. I think it's funny that you seem to have neglected his point about history, which is that every time we try to free up markets, things get better. And every time we try things your way, things get worse. I wonder why you don't seem to want to look at the historical record. Could it be the economic disaster that happened after your own student, George Papandreou, became Prime Minister of Greece? That caused Papandreou himself to realize you were wrong. How long will it take you? I always thought we're a mix of stuff. Like, human beings, it's not, it's not like we're purely greedy. So, you think there are times when people take an action not thinking the benefits will outweigh the costs? Because that's all greed is in an economics context. And it's not like we're purely altruistic. We're obviously a mix. Kalinsky, if you're gonna argue economics, is it too much to ask that you actually learn some economics? Even if someone is being what they consider to be altruistic, they are still examining costs and benefits. If they're donating to a charity, they're going to consider whether their money will be better spent with Oxfam or Doctors Without Borders. Again, who wouldn't behave that way? I always felt it was like square peg round hole type stuff. Because it just, I feel like that so obviously disregards what we are. If it's that obvious, why do you think Friedman never thought about it? You're no different from a supercilious, narcissistic, ignorant creationist bleeding, well then why are there still apes? As if biologists are gonna go, gee, there are still apes? We never noticed that. Give me a break. Friedman wrote extensively about how people behave when they're spending money altruistically or engaging in volunteering or other charitable acts. In particular, he differentiated the behavior between people engaging in private acts of charity with their own money and resources and when government does it with money taken in taxes. If you knew anything at all about Friedman, you'd know about him covering that. I guess to you, episode 4 of Free to Choose from Cradle to Grave didn't exist. Yet, it did. Here's one excerpt. We as human beings don't have a responsibility, but I hope we have a compassion and an interest in the bottom 20%. And I only want to say to you that the capitalist system, the private enterprise system in the 19th century did a far better job of expressing that sense of compassion than the governmental welfare programs are today. The 19th century, the period which people denigrate, as a high tide of capitalism, had the, was a period of the greatest outpouring of eleemosynary and charitable activity that the world has ever known. And one of the things I hold against the welfare system most seriously is that it has destroyed private charitable arrangements which are far more effective, far more compassionate, far more person-to-person -person in helping people who are really, for no fault of their own, in disadvantaged situations. Booyah, Friedman. That's why people like Wolf and Kalinsky have to keep telling this lie. Funny enough, that's Milton Friedman's argument of don't swim against the tide. What? What are you talking about? But he thinks we're not we're purely selfish, and that's the only way to build a society that functions is just around selfishness. I just showed that's a complete lie. But it's what we've come to expect from Kyle Kulinski. He lied about what John Stossel said on the subject of beggars and the poor. He lied about Alan Greenspan claiming he was a purist libertarian. He lied when he claimed a fire department who had behaved horribly was private when it was a government fire department who had been restricted by city ordinance. In fact, I don't know of one single time when Kulinski tried to refute libertarianism or the free market that he didn't resort to outright lies. What's selfish about a universal healthcare system that, you know, exists in every other developed country. Well, that's more on the altruistic side of the equation, not the selfish side. No, it isn't. Free clinics and charity hospitals are on the altruistic side, which we had in abundance before your holy government started meddling in healthcare. There's nothing altruistic whatsoever about using guns to extract money from others and forcing them into the healthcare system you think they should have. That's not altruistic. That's narcissistic, self-righteous, lazy, immoral bullying. Nothing more. You don't want to be altruistic. You want to force other people to be altruistic for you. And there's nothing compassionate about that. And if you think that government welfare is somehow compassionate and altruistic, consider this. 
Friedman wanted to replace the current welfare system with a negative income tax, despite the lies you've told about him. And even though it's not what libertarians would want, it was and is superior to government welfare programs by every single metric. Why couldn't it be implemented? Hear it from Friedman himself, very same episode. The major reason it is not feasible today to have a negative income tax is because the present welfare bureaucracy would be out of work. They are the major objectors, as pa uh, Senator Pat, and now he's now a senator, Pat Moynihan then, demonstrated in his book on the Nixon program. The chief obstacle to getting it enacted was a welfare bureaucracy. So that I don't believe these administrative problems, if you got it enacted, would be at all serious. I uh, first proposed a negative income tax 25 years ago, but I testified against the final version of the Nixon Correct. plan. Why? Because the welfare bureaucrats had led them to introduce changes in it which converted it from a decent, satisfactory well, uh, negative income tax to one which would have been just as bad as what you now have. Would have been added on top of everything else. Yep, greedy government bureaucrats who cared more about keeping their own jobs than actually helping the poor. Richard Wolff is right that Milton Friedman needed to make this argument to justify totally unfettered, laissez-faire, free market capitalism. No, Friedman didn't make that argument at all. And so Wolf is a liar. And so are you. We can analyze it objectively and say, hey man, stop polluting that river. No, he would say, well, you're going after them for polluting that river, but look at all the good that they did. Lie, 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 lie. You haven't read one single word Friedman had to say about pollution, have you? It was actually a brilliant move of the corporations to find somebody and prop somebody up who was willing to be their intellectual cover. And that's the role that Milton Friedman plays. More blatant straw man and ad hominem attacks. When what neither Wolf nor you did was show how he was wrong. I'm going to let Friedman have the last word. The results of these programs have been disappointing. Why? I believe that the basic reason is, is because it is very hard to achieve good objectives through bad means. And the means we have been using are bad in two very different respects. In the first place, all of these programs involve some people spending other people's money for objectives that are determined by still a third group of people. Nobody spends somebody else's money as carefully as he spends his own. Nobody has the same dedication to achieving somebody else's objectives that he displays when he pursues his own. Beyond this, the programs have a insidious effect on the moral fiber of both the people who administer the programs and the people who are supposedly benefiting from it. For the people who administer it, it instills in them a feeling of almost godlike power for the people who are supposedly benefiting, it instills a feeling of childlike dependence. Their capacity for personal decision-making atrophies. The result is that the programs involve a misuse of money. They do not achieve the objectives which it was their intention to achieve. But far more important than this, they tend to rot, rot away the very fabric that holds a decent society together. We have become increasingly dependent on government. We have surrendered power to government. Nobody has taken it from us. It's our doing. The results, monumental government spending, much of it wasted, little of it, going to the people whom we would like to see helped. Burdensome taxes, high inflation, a welfare system, under which neither those who receive help nor those who pay for it are satisfied. Trying to do good with other people's money simply has not worked. Hey, thanks for watching. Please hit like and subscribe and keep these videos coming by donating, becoming a subscriber and getting special benefits, or even for free with their time. And check out all the great content here like this video selected just for you.